Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. You know, Mr. Dillon, a man can get mighty hungry when he don't eat. Uh, 30 more miles and we'll be in Dodge, Chester, than you can eat to your heart's content. Yes, sir. But that wind comes up again and freezes us to death. Well, that didn't freeze us to death last time. Well, that was just because we was lucky enough to find that sodbuster shack. I couldn't have stood another two days of wind and cold like that. It aged me something awful. Aged you? Well, freezing's supposed to keep you the way you are, isn't it? I'm too wore out to joke. <laughs> well, I'll admit that was about the worst blizzard I ever saw. But it's behind us now. We can forget about it. Forget about it. Still starving, man. Hey, look yonder, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Looks like a hunter's camp. Kind of stoga wagon, a couple of horses picketed by them trees. Don't see much sign of life, though. No. But with them horses there, there's got to be somebody around. And it's been 20 below for three nights now. They could have frozen to that. They had a fire built over there. Yeah. weren't made today. Or yesterday, either. Well, ain't there a soul here, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, maybe they got caught out on the prairie when the blizzard hit. Sure does look that way. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how that team is still alive with nothing but that wagon for protection. And poor old things don't look none too lively. Well, you can't blame them. Get your hands up. Both of you. We better do what the old man says. He must have been hiding in the wagon. Come over here closer. Now stop right there. This your camp, mister? Of course it's my camp. Now you two drop them guns. We got our hands up. That's enough, isn't it? You do what I say. I ain't taking no chances. I ain't going to get left here again. What? You're going to hitch up that team and you're going to take me into Dodge. You ain't running off like Jed Lorner. Well, who's Jed Lerner? He's my Skinner. Well, why'd he leave you? Well, he seen this blizzard coming. He didn't want to take any chances, so he rode off. He's probably been in Dodge all the time, warm and cozy. Well, why didn't you go with him? Well, I twisted my leg and my foot so that I couldn't ride a horse, that's why. Lerner figured driving a wagon would be too slow. You mean he left you out here to freeze? Yeah, I'll kill him when I find him. And I'll kill you, too, if you don't drive me into Dodge. He's a U.S. Marshal, mister. He ain't gonna leave you here. Marshal? Now, why don't you put down that rifle and tell us who you are? All right. My name's Ira Puckett, Marshal. I'm usually up north following the Republican herd, but I come south this year. I'm getting old, and I thought it'd be warmer down here. You sure made a mistake about that, didn't you? Well, you'll get me into Dodge, won't you? Yeah, of course we will. Yeah, that foot I twisted, I, I don't feel nothing in it. it. Must be froze. Yeah, it could be. Uh, I'll kill Jed Larner for this. Forget it, Puckett. I'm not taking you back to Dodge just so you can hang. All right, I'll forget it. Till I find him. <laughs> Hello, 
Come here. Come here. How is he, Doc? Pocket? Oh, he'll be all right, man. In time. Uh, then his foot wasn't so bad after all, huh? Yeah, he didn't have much foot left when I got through with him. Oh. Yeah, but he'll be able to walk with a cane. But his buffalo hunting days are over. Uh-huh. Uh, does he know that? I told him. You know, Ira Puckett's a proud man, Matt. He's a little too proud. Now, what do you mean? Well, what he hated most about this Jed Larner leaving him on the prairie wasn't the fact that he might have died, but that he was helpless. And a man like Puckett can't stand being helpless. Oh, I see. And now, all crippled up, he, he's a better man, Matt. Well, he'll get over it. man can get used to most anything in time. Yeah, no, no, no. I got my doubts about Puckett. He won't even admit to how old he is. Yeah. What would you guess, Doc? Well, he, he's past 70 anyway. Uh, he, he's in the back room there, Matt, if you want to see him. All right. I'll come with you. Uh, hello, Puckett. Marshal. How you feeling? Doc tell you what he done to me? Yeah? He ruined my foot. I saved your life, Puckett. And I ain't sure I'm grateful, Doc. You're gonna be all right, Puckett. You'll be able to get around. Yeah, like an old woman. What am I gonna do for a living? I ain't one of you city people. I live off the country. I always have. I'm a man, not a dude. Yeah, you'll get used to town life. <laughs> and you'll find men here, too. Yeah, what kind of men? Walking around all slickered up, parting the hair in the middle, bowing to the ladies. Well, there ain't one of them could do half the things I done. Well, I was living with Comanches when most of them were sniveling in their mother's aprons. Yeah, I know, but you'll find something to do. I'll help you. You will? Sure. Then help me find Jed Larner. Bring him in here so that I can kill him with my bare hands. What does he look like? Oh, uh, he's tall, black hair. He's got a big scar run across one eye and halfway down his right cheek. Good. I'll try to find him. And if I do, I'll run him out of town before you get to him. Huh. I can't even trust you, can I? Not when you want to murder a man, Ira. I told you I didn't bring you in so you could be hung. Chester. Chester, you're going to ruin that. Ruin what? Well, that stick of wood, of course. You're going to wreck it, banging it on the stove that way. Well, it's too big. It, it don't fit. Well, why don't you forget about it? It's too hot in here anyway. Yes, sir. You know, Mr. Dillon, I was thinking. Yeah, what? Well, with a whole new year starting, it, it might be we could maybe get a new stove. You know, like one of them I showed you in the Granger catalog last week? Uh-huh. Oh, just think how fine it'd be to have a stove that don't smoke. Well, if you ever shook that grate down, maybe this one wouldn't. Shake the grate? Well, Mr. Dillon, I carried the ashes out just this morning. Oh, hello, Mr. Puckett. I want to talk to you, Marshal. Sure, Ira. Come on in. Sit down. Sitting down ain't going to help nothing. It ain't rest that's going to toughen this foot up. I can talk standing anyways. All right, stand. Now, where's Jed Larner? Ira, aren't you ever going to forget about him? Not likely. Mm, you might as well. He ain't been saw since we brought you in here six weeks ago. Well, if you're any kind of a man, you'd go find him for me. Would you like me to cut his throat for you, too? Don't you make fun of me. Now, calm down, Ira. Nobody's making fun of you. If I was 20 years younger, I'd give him a real tussle. <laughs> I expect you would. I did well enough, I'll do it yet. Doggone it, we're only trying to help you, Puckett. Yeah, well, I don't need any help. Not unless you're going to help me find Jed Larner. I'm not going to do that. Well, shouldn't have expected it from a no dang lawman. I'll find him myself. You wait and see. My gracious. Well, he sure did get upset, didn't he? He's got a lot of pride, Chester. And that's going to get him into trouble yet. Oh, 
This is a great way to start the new year, Matt. Oh? Well, what do you mean, Kitty? Well, all last year I was hoping maybe I'd be in San Francisco by now. San Francisco? Yeah. You never told me. What would you have done about it? Well, uh... uh nothing, I guess, but uh, why San Francisco? No blizzards, no dust. No cowboys. Ah, but they got fog. And all those sailors and miners aren't any gentler than these cowboys. Yeah, I know. But imagine going to dinner in a carriage, eating off a tablecloth, <laughs> dancing on a hardwood floor. You're spoiled, Kitty. Now, how could I get spoiled here in Dodge City? Oh, <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, you save your money. You'll get to California someday. Yeah, sure. If I walk. Well, a lot of people have gone that way. <laughs> Who do you think I am, Sacagawea? Yeah. Now, there was a woman. Yeah? You know, I always had... What's the matter, man? That man at the bar who just turned around. Which man? One with a scar down his cheek. Oh? I'll be back, Kitty. Yeah. Good evening, Marshal. Good evening. What for are you staring at me, Marshal? Your name Jed Larner? What if it is? How long you been in town, Larner? About an hour. Something wrong, Marshal? You, uh... You remember the big blizzard we had? Six or seven weeks back? <laughs> Who don't? Yeah, we all do, I guess. Especially Ira Puckett. Especially what? He didn't die, Werner. Well, that's fine. I I went back looking for him. I wondered where he got to. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure you did. Well, it's true. Puckett's here in Dodge, Werner. He is? And if he finds you, he'll kill you. But he isn't going to find you because you're leaving right now. And don't show up anywhere around here again. Now, wait, Mark. I can't arrest you. I can't put you in jail. But I'll tell you what I can do. What? Suppose I just let everybody here know that you're the man who ran off and left Ira Puckett to die. Oh, no, no. They'd tear you apart, Larner. No, don't say nothing, Marshal. They'd set you on fire. Don't tell them. Uh, I leave, Marshal. I'll leave right now. Well, you got rid of him in a hurry. Well, I just saved him from being shot and Ira Puckett from hanging for it. Oh, that was Jed Lana. Uh-huh. He's the one that ought to hang. Uh, he didn't mean to kill the old man, Kitty. Well, what's the difference? Well, legally, there's some. Enough to give Ira his foot back? <laughs> kind of hard to argue with, aren't you? Why? Because I think straight? Um, why don't we talk about San Francisco, huh? No, I've changed my mind. I think I'll go to New York. I don't think I'd... Oh, I... Was Marshall, talking... I, I got to talk to you. Yeah. He looks awful mad. Good thing he isn't armed. He can always find a gun. You done it, Marshal. It was you, wasn't it? You saw Judd Lerner, huh? Yes, he jumped on his horse and rode out of town before I could stop him. When I had to stand there and watch. I didn't even have a rock to throw at him. Why'd you do it, Marshal? What'd you run him off for? To save you from hanging? Well, I'd rather hang and live this way. I wasn't born to become a helpless old man. The least you could have done was let me fight my own battle like I always did on the plains. You took my manhood away from me, Marshal. Oh, Ira, you're living in town now among people. Why don't you get used to it? All right. All right, I will. I'll start living like you town people. Are you going to get a job? <laughs> you bet I'm going to. I sure am. And it's going to pay me a lot of money, too. What do you mean? You will find out, Marshal, when it's too late. <laughs> Good morning, ain't it, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, thanks to that wind we had last night. Well, it kept me awake. Uh-huh. 
All night? <laughs> no, sir, I wouldn't say that. Not all night. <laughs> hey, look over there by the bank. You better worry, Puckett. Yeah. That's the first time he's had his team and wagon out. Where do you suppose he's going? Uh, right now, he's gone into the bank. <laughs> What's he carrying that shotgun for? <laughs> he can't go hunting in the bank, can he? <laughs> Yes, he can, Chester. Mm-hmm. Come on. My land, you don't mean to say old Puckett's going to hold up that bank, Mr. Dunn. He said last night he's going to start living like town people. Get a job, make a lot of money. Well, this could be his idea of how to do it. Oh, my land, he sure couldn't have no other. He can carry that shotgun in there. She, you going in after him? Yeah. But Mr. Dillon, he's got a shotgun. I know. Look, Chester, take his team and wagon off somewhere. Lead him around back of the bank, out of sight. Well, maybe we can handle this without a shooting. Okay, sir. Come on. Come on. Here. Hurry it up, Chester. He's coming out. Yes, sir. I'm long gone, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. shoot with one hand, Marshal. Sure. Don't you try to follow me, neither. Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait, hey, wait, where, where, where's my wagon? Where's my team? You're in a bad fix, but Somebody stole them. Well, I can't get away without any team. No, you can't. So you might as well give up. You done it. You're behind this, Marshal. Are you gonna shoot me? Well, I shouldn't, I. Because you're in enough trouble already. And shooting me won't help a bit. You're trapped, Puckett, and there isn't a thing you can do about it. So why don't you use your head? All right. Here. There's your money. Now you bring my outfit back. I ain't going to jail, Marshal. Like I said, Puckett, shooting me isn't going to help you. And I'm not going to do a thing about your outfit. You think you've outsmarted me, don't you? Why don't you give it up, Puckett? You're licked. Yeah, you should think I... I... Oh, I... I just can't shoot you, Marshal. Here, here, take the gun. Good. I'm, I'm just a helpless old fool. Can't even rob a bank proper. I'm not sure you really wanted to, Puckett. What? Huh? All you wanted was to prove something about that manhood you think has been taken away from you. But you sure picked a foolish way to do it. Yeah, I reckon I did. Goodness me, I thought he wouldn't never give up. He didn't have much choice, Chester. I went in the back door and told the people in the bank to keep out the way. You want me to take him over to the jail now? Oh, no, 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 I, I can't stand jail. Please, Marshal. Lock him up, Chester. I'll return this money and have a talk with Mr. Botkin. I'll be over later. <laughs> told you to lock him up, Chester. Well, I started to, Mr. Dunn, but I just couldn't stand the look on his face after I put him in the cell. You know, Ira, seems to me everybody treats you pretty well. Yeah, everybody but Jed Lerner. That's true. But Chester and I bring you in. Doc saves your life. I keep you from hanging, and if I hadn't outsmarted you at the bank, you'd probably be lying dead somewhere now. It seems to me that everybody's gone to a lot of trouble. For an old man full of a lot of foolish pride. Now, what do you think? Yeah, I've been thinking, Marshal. Sitting here thinking. And you know what? You're right. But I'm afraid it's too late now. No, it's not. What? I explained everything to Mr. Bodkin at the bank, and he's willing to drop any charges against you, but on one condition. What's that? Well, to be honest with you, it was my idea, but Mr. Bodkin agreed. You got a job here, and you quit being so doggone ornery. Otherwise, you're going to go to jail. 
Oh, but what can I do with this crippled foot? Well, seeing you're so handy with a shotgun, I think Jim Buck might hire you to ride messenger on the stage. You think so? Well, he told me he would. You went and saw him? And it doesn't take any walking, Ira. Now, how about it? Fine. I never had a job like that. It is, Mr. Jones. Well, we'll stage. All ready to pull out. Yeah. And look at there. Old Puckett sitting up there on the box. Proud as a bandy rooster. Oh, I am, Marshal. You got business with me? No, Jeff. Just came down to see you off. You about ready to pull out? Yeah, just as soon as I check the harness and that lead horse. Hello there, Marshal. <laughs> oh, Puckett. First time I ever rode shotgun in my whole life. I sure hope we get held up. Well, I hope you don't, for the outlaw's sake. That's a pretty fierce shotgun you got there, Puckett. Don't go shooting just anybody now. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Yep. Yeah. We're well, off, Marshal. Good trip, Tim. Thank you. Now, then. You all set, Bucket? I sure am. Say, Marshal, you know something? Ah, uh, what's that? This ain't a bad way to start the new year. <laughs> no. Man's got to make a change once in a while. Sure. All right, Jim, let's go. We're behind schedule already. <laughs> Hang on, Bucket. Here we go. in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Methton. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Hawkins is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke.